Well, thank you. My name is Nick Von Bergen. I'm a pediatric cardiac electrophysiologist up here in Madison, Wisconsin, and I get to present the Atriamp. I do have a disclosure regarding the Atriamp. I am the inventor of the Atriamp and a co-founder of Atrilli Medical, which licenses the Atriamp from the University of Wisconsin. The reason I invented it was because I considered us blind to postoperative arrhythmias in many cases. We know that arrhythmias are common. We know they're associated with increased morbidity, mortality, and hospital stay. And bedside monitors will often give you an EKG like this. With the inability to accurately see the atrial signals, we are blind to what the rhythm happens to be. And so I felt that bedside monitors were inadequate for accurate rhythm identification, which could result in missed, delayed, or inaccurate diagnosis. But we already know what to do. There's recommendations out there by the American Heart Association that say, if you have a post-operative patient, you should take advantage of atrial epicardial pacemaker leads. Using the atrial leads for an atrial electrocardiogram can be especially useful in the diagnosis of arrhythmias in children. However, we don't do it. And we don't do it because it takes time. We'd have to wait for the EKG technician. They'd give a little 10-second snapshot, and then they'd leave. So this is the challenge that made me invent the Atrium. The Atrium is this device here that connects directly to the atrial epicardial wires, then allows us to hook to the precordial lead on the bedside monitor and allow atrial electrogram, continuous atrial electrogram monitoring on the bedside monitor. And so this has potential advantages. It allows for a more accurate diagnosis of both sinus and arrhythmias. It's faster. It's a real-time signal. It's more accessible. I can see the, the signals on the bedside monitor. I can actually even see them at home, and it does allow a rapid connect to allow pacing if needed. It also uses the bedside monitor, so it records for later review. And we found with research on the Atriamp that there's improvements in both accuracy and provider confidence. So this is an example of the signals from the Atriamp here on the precordial lead. So here's the surface electrogram. This is a hypoplastic left heart patient. And right here at this rate, you can see the P waves. But once the heart rate increased into the 170s, those P waves were hidden on the T wave. But from across the room, we we're always able to see these huge atrial signals on this atrial electrogram on the precordial lead, the beauty of having continuous real-time monitoring of the atrial electrogram. So what are some of the other uh, data to support the use of the atrial electrogram? There's data about improvements in accuracy, both at physician and nursing levels. We also know that earlier treatment of things like JET can improve outcomes. The improvements in accuracy can provide that. This is a study that is a little scary to me. We also, uh, this study was actually done in Mayo in pediatric in the pediatric uh, portion of the hospital. And they found that rhythms, which an active intervention may be necessary, were more difficult to interpret on the bedside monitors. And in addition to that, of those rhythms incorrectly interpreted, almost 90% had already had some type of active therapeutic inter intervention. In other words, we are making Big decisions based on inadequate data that could have altered the course and could be the wrong thing to do. At the University of Wisconsin, we've actually used the Atriamp over the last year. We transitioned from occasional use of the research and now have standardized the care. This is the standard of care at the University of Wisconsin because its benefit in allowing us to distinguish postoperative arrhythmias. So this is the Atriamp itself. The Atriamp allows you to insert one of the atrial epicardial wires by pushing right down here. There's a button. You insert that into the negative port. To place the second wire, the either atrial wire or skin lead, you place them in the positive port the same way. You can separate the blue and gray to hide the wires. And then when you want to display on the bedside monitor, you take the precordial lead and you hook it up to this electrode here after removing the cap. Once this is done, you're now displaying continuous real-time atrial electrograms. To pace, if you want to connect to a temporary pacemaker, there's the pacemaker port here. You remove the plug, you take a separately provided cable, insert that into this port, and then the back end of the cable goes into the temporary pacemaker and it allows the pacemaker to work just like it should. So here's an example of the atriamp in, uh, in action. This is a patient with junctional antiparatic cardia. I had actually treated with amio. I was pacing, and then I disconnected. Uh, the rate was lower. I disconnected the pacing, and then this was what came out. And so here, surface electrograms, I can't see the atrial signals, but on the atriamp lead right down here, the precordial lead, you can see that and that great spike right there. We have a VA with retrograde conduction. This is JET with one-to-one -one conduction. This is not sinus tachycardia. Here's another patient. Um, this is an adult congenital patient who had um, an aortic valve replaced. So they were in heart block with pacing here. And if you look at the surface electrograms, the question is, is there a little atrial signal here? It's hard to tell. But when you look at the atrium, there's no question at all. Rapid, irregular rhythm. This is atrial fibrillation. 
So I put this slide in here because I gave the talk on tech assessment just a bit ago, and, and I want us to try to evaluate, wait for the scales um, to adopt or not to adopt. So we think about the clinical advantages. We have more rapid, more accurate diagnosis. Um, and we think about the hospital needs. Um, this actually allows us to actually operate now at the practice standards as recommended by the AHA, but now in real time and continuously. This may also allow for programmatic improvement for a care of our congenital heart patients. There are downsides, of course. There's a cost to the device. They're disposable, single-use only for um, um, for patients, post-operative patients. And it does require some nursing and staff education. At the same time, potential uh, improvements or savings could be potential revenue savings if outcomes improve, such as length of stay. It does allow reallocation of resources. The EKG tech could go to the uh, ER as opposed to necessarily the ICU. And this may also facilitate procedural billing. So that's the summary of the ATRIAMP. Thank you for your time, and please feel free to contact me with questions. Thank you.